Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Well, I am here in the middle of the farm and I am pasturing my goats. And you will see that these goats are happy eating these grasses. What I like about goat farming is the fact that you will not spend too much about the food because they will just eat mainly on grasses. I also supplement them with vitamins and I regularly give them with salt and of course the water. And of course, one thing that I have learned in goat farming is the regular deworming because sometimes they will really have the parasites inside in their tummy. In my case, I am deworming my goats every four months to ensure that they are healthy and to ensure that they will not contract disease. I am also giving them supplements, the multivitamins. Sometimes I give them powdered vitamins, sometimes I give them injectable vitamins. This is one of the reasons that I entertained the idea of having a large flock of goats actually we already have uh, more than 10 goats right here and i'm still planning to augment the female goats because we don't need a lot of uh, male goats actually pedro is here and another male is there and i think we can exchange that with you know female goats to the goat farms of my friend And talking about the food, I believe that the success of the farm largely depends on the ability to minimize the expenses for the food without compromising the health and the growth of our animals. Why I am saying this is because just uh, this week, I was able to discover a new nutritious food for our fish. And this is the combination of the, the soya beans and the Azola. And this is the reason why also that I became so serious and busy about the making of our boxes for our Azola. Well, I have experimented about the production of this Azola. The first experiment was that I placed the box of the Azola in a shaded part where no sunlight can penetrate and it did not become successful. Number two, I exposed the Azola in a very warm environment that all day out they will be exposed to the sunlight and it did not succeed. And the third thing is that I made boxes, in fact you have witnessed in my previous videos that we made this uh, very shallow digging, we put the tarp and cover this with net and it became successful. So my conclusion is that the Azola plantation could not be done in a completely shaded area and number two, the Azola plantation could not also be done in an area where it is totally exposed to the sunlight but it could become successful if we will of course balance the environment part of the day will be exposed to sunlight and uh, part of the day will be of course protected from the sunlight and these are the things that are going on in this farm the lessons that i have learned about the asola is to feed them with chicken dung with rabbit dung or this goat manure it, it could be possible but uh, another lesson that I have learned is to feed them with the ammonia produced by the catfish. And I already have mentioned that in our previous videos. And if you would like to try this one, well, I recommend it because this is very effective. So aside from that, I would like to report to you many things. Well, I am so glad to discover that our banana trees have bare fruits already. Sooner or later, we're going to be harvesting these bananas. I'm really happy about this one. And the mango trees are also now flowering. What we did was to fumigate, to drive away insects. And I'm just crossing my finger that the fruits of these mangoes 
will become successful, will become big, and we're gonna be having good harvest in the future. So these are the things that really inspired me to do the farming. And today you will witness also as we're gonna go to the aviary where we can hear the chirpings of this very innocent chicks of this uh, parakeets. And I would like to make an advance announcement that we already have the booking. Uh, sooner or later, we're gonna be receiving also our breeders of this African lovebirds. And that's the main concentration also to produce African lab lovebirds because they're very saleable. We already have told you many things about this uh, parakeet breeding. We mentioned about the chili, we mentioned about the azola, we mentioned about the cattle bones as good supplements for the breeding of our lovebirds. And it proves to us that it's really very effective. In fact, I can already count chicks of these lovebirds. More than dozens of them are already there inside in the nest boxes. And talking about the catfish, well, we already have established a good system from the preparation of the tank, from the preparation of the breeder, from the spawning, and also the water management during the hatching period. And these are already perfect. And uh, if you want to learn, of course, if you are new to this channel, I invite you to please browse also our other videos about uh, what I am talking about because we already have so many videos about this. And guys, as I am going to get inside to the aviary, I recall that I promised you that I will give you an update about the nesting materials. I mean, which of the nesting materials or nest box is good? Using the bamboo or these clay pots? Well, let me tell you that it's the same, actually. You can use the bamboo and you can also use the clay pots. The disadvantage of the bamboo is the fact that you cannot just easily monitor the conditions of the eggs right there inside. But uh, we can make an improvement on this. Maybe we can make a small door or a window opening for us to monitor. Maybe it's possible. What is important is that they will have the privacy. In fact, all the bamboos are being occupied now and I can hear chirpings of this uh, very innocent uh, chicks. This made me conclude that bamboos also are effective nest boxes. So I will give them the water spinach and I would like to say something about this. Uh, my practice is not to give them fresh water spinach. If you are intending to give water spinach, then we will cut that in the morning and give that in the afternoon. Because uh, fresh water spinach will cause some diarrhea to our lab bricks. So we will go inside and we will give them this uh, very delicious vegetable, water spinach. Okay, come on. So I can hear the chirpings of the chicks right inside in this uh, bamboo uh, nest boxes and we are making it sure that the ants could not penetrate that's why we are doing some you know cleaning every day we always pour this with fresh water and we are making it sure that we're gonna clean this up every day because we wanted that this is gonna be uh, ants free. Ants really are very destructive to this breeding and I'm so happy because uh, our staff had been so faithful also uh, doing our instruction. So I can see that there are so many, so many of the chicks right now and they're quite disturbed because they're not used to seeing me here inside and uh, this is also one of the things that we have to consider that if we're gonna make our lovebirds used to humans we're gonna be frequently uh, getting inside in the aviary because uh, if we will just seldom do this then 
chances are they will be of course surprised and they will be disturbed so in order to use them with the smell of human beings we will do this very frequently and that's what we are doing here in the aviary we have here big chicks already okay i will disturb this one uh, we do not usually do this the purposes of recording I would like to let you see that uh, we have here three big chicks already it's here so we will return this one and all of these boxes are filled with eggs maybe this one can look at here wow there are three of them also babies are already big and the color is really very nice let me ask you about your opinion about this one because you will see right here in this particular nest box that there are four chicks but the younger one is very small compared to the size of the older one you will see the difference in size it's very small while the others are already big I don't know if this will survive and this is the downside of this uh, lovebird breeding because the last egg that will be laid will of course be hatched very late and the moment that it's gonna hatch then the size of the chick will really become inferior so I don't know what is your suggestion about this one maybe we can get this one or hand feed but it's very small I don't know if that's possible but uh, we will just make an experiment and observation about this one and I will tell you what's the result. So guys, you will see our Azola plantation and uh, I'm so glad that this is just a matter of three days since we have completed the fabrication of the boxes. Since the time that we put them here, they were so uh, little but they rapidly increased in number in population in just a matter of three days. And I think this is again one of the main focus of our farm is to produce our own food and we already have made an experiment about this one that this azola is a vital ingredient for any kind of food for the food of the rabbits the lovebirds even the catfish the fish the chickens the ducks so this uh, azola really is a miracle fern for me that's why i'm encouraging you if you are into this kind of farming you can also try uh, making your own food, growing your own fern like this asola to supplement the feeding of our animals. And I guarantee you that you can really cut more than half of the expenses for the food alone. So this is it. I hope that this will multiply rapidly. As you can see, it multiplied rapidly, of course. Uh, but I'm just crossing my finger that we can uh, add more azolas right there. Maybe in this portion, we can also make boxes of our Zolas. 
So this is the best uh, place also for the Azola. And guys, maybe you're interested to know about the dimensions of these boxes. Well, let me tell you that it only have a depth of 4 inches and then it has a width of 48 inches and it has a, a length of 10 feet per box. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 40 feet boxes. So guys, we are now here to feed our breeder chickens. Maybe you are also eager to know about the quantity of food that we're gonna give. Every feeding time, we are giving them 35 grams of these uh, breeder pellets. And in the morning, we're giving them with Azola. And the breeding is still very consistent. The production of the eggs is still very consistent. And now we're gonna feed them. Come on, guys. Oh, I forgot. It should be pushed inside. Oh, oh. Yes, that's it. Oh, they're really very eager to eat. They're very hungry. That's it. Wait, 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 wait. I know, I know you're hungry. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, go, go. Ah. Oh, okay, good. Good. Up, up, up. So guys, I'm so happy with this activity. Uh, we already have fed our DW chickens and we already have feed also our geese and then our ostrichs, our turkeys are getting plenty of course we have the bantam chicken we have the chicks of the bantam chicken this productive yield is a product of our perseverance consistency and of course our faith in god we always ask for his uh, guidance and protection and protection also for our farm animals and uh, i'm looking forward to raise our ducks we will revive our duck farm and you're gonna witness that in the future and i'm gonna be sharing with you also uh, our experiences about this duck farming for us to succeed together thank you guys for watching i will invite you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading videos every three to five days only here at dexter's world